We want to talk about rules of engagement when you are in a fight as a married couple. We procured six rules that we want to share with you guys. We don't claim to be experts in relationships, but these are some of the things that we learned while being married for four and a half years. This past February 26, 2022 marked the 10th year anniversary since our first date back in February 26 of 2012 and we somehow ended up disagreeing with each other <laughs> on this special day. We eventually resolved it and we had some valuable takeaways from that experience. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is a great place to learn new skills or enhance your existing craft to the next level. It features an awesome selection of talented mentors in a variety of classes, whether you're a parent, an entrepreneur, or even just wanting to turn your side hustle into a real business, there's something there for everyone. As parents, YouTubers, full-time employees, and small business owners, we always have way too much to do. And some tasks slip through the cracks until we reach the deadlines or until they start to pile on at the very last minute. Other times we're overwhelmed with the amount of work and we get virtually paralyzed. So I joined this class on Skillshare called Mastering Productivity, Create a Custom System That Works by Thomas Frank. Let me tell you, it was very insightful. I now have a whole new outlook on task management and I'm excited to see the results on the productivity since implementing the system that Thomas shared with us in his class. It was very well thought out and was organized into easy to digest pieces. And all that without ad interruption in the middle of the video so you can really focus on the content. Use the link in the description section below to join Skillshare absolutely free for one month. But this only applies to the first thousand people to join Skillshare using our special link. New premium classes are launching every week so don't miss out. Hello, lovely people of the world. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Anyasay, Yaravan. Ahlan o sahlan. This is Justin. And Sarah. And Sabrina and Chanel are sleeping. Yes. Okay, so let's get started on rules of engagement when you're in a fight as a married couple. These are six things in no particular order, but we want to start with what we picked as number one, which is wire in your head that certain things are off limits. As a couple, you have to agree on what those things are. What are the completely off limit? No matter how much you disagree, no matter how angry you are, mm -hmm. you should not cross these boundaries. First thing that we agreed on was the word divorce. Big no no. All right. In the very beginning of our marriage, first two years, I would say that we both like to say that word a lot. Yeah. When we are in a disagreement, we go, <laughs> okay, fine. There's nothing else for us to do than to get divorced then. Right. Like we or would it's just... like, okay, then why don't we just get a divorce and you'd be happier? You know? Like, even if we were just kidding around, it should not be something that you put out into the universe at all, ever. Yeah, the way I like to think about it is that gun safety rule. You don't point a gun at somebody unless you mean to point it. So we don't say the D word unless we really mean it. We don't use it as a empty threat or just to get upper hand in the argument. Or even just out of spite. Right. Yeah. So that's one thing. So, but then after the first two years, we both stop saying that word and we are really good at it. We have never uttered that word in the last two and a half years. Yeah. And we help each other out. Like we help remind one another as well. Like you're not supposed to say that word. We made a promise to one another. We agreed on this before. You know, because we're only human, we're bound to repeat the same mistakes or, you know, old habits die hard. Is that true? Is that the word? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So old habits are harder to break, so and, and second thing that we agree on that is off limit is foul language. We've discussed how it's very, very important that we do not use foul language because, first of all, 
it doesn't show it doesn't it's not a good display of your intellectual ability you know like if you kind of resort to the foul language it's, it's as if you are lost for words and you couldn't find a better word and secondly it's disrespectful so we try to maintain an environment and no matter how angry we are how high our emotions are that we should never ever ever uh, that we should always maintain a respectful way or manner of speaking to one another so simply dropping like the f-bomb or the bs or the b word or the s word or any word out there is just disrespectful and also it does not show you're not mature enough to come up with a better word as uh, dr phil likes to say it's very unbecoming of you Next if time. you use foul language Talaga lang. Okay. <laughs> okay and we've been pretty good at this for the last six months or at least we what the heck for years when did you drop a f-bomb for years but for you it was like okay, last so. year we're not throwing anyone under the bus <laughs> here you go <laughs> Okay, the third one that we say that are off limits is raising your voice to a level 10. Yeah, it's uh, one of us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously when you're in a fight, you might talk a little louder than normal, but that's understandable. But like screaming at the top of your lungs, that's totally unacceptable. And should not even be something that you resort to at all, ever. Like there is, the more mature and adult-like way to deal with issues, conflicts, or disagreements is to just maintain a calm tone and maintain a matter-of-fact um, demeanor when you're speaking to one another. So it seems, it comes across more respectful of the other person's feelings and it also allows for the other person to open up more, you know, because if you start yelling at the person the other person might or your spouse might actually your partner might feel like shutting like shutting down and maybe just like being silent as dr phil like to say if go. i'm yelling it's very unbecoming of you <laughs> somebody's obsessed with dr phil yeah so yelling that's something that i'm guilty of but i think it's the work in progress i've been getting better at it as many of you may be surprised to find out, Justin here has a bit of a temper and he is doing so well at controlling it lately, but it's a work in progress. I would have to remind him that that it is just an emotion, anger is just an emotion, and that he is able to sort of have control and self-control over that emotion. Okay. So let's talk about the fourth and last thing that oh we gosh. agreed on to never <laughs> cross this boundary, no matter how angry we are. <laughs> okay. This number four item we have is never use psychological warfare. Let Guilty. Me, let me tell you, she is a seventh degree black belt in psychological warfare. <laughs> She's an expert level, <laughs> and when she uses psychological warfare on me, I have no comeback. So I just yeah. resorting to yelling. Yep. And that's how it's been <laughs> for us in the early years of our marriage. Like I would say the first two years, two to three years. It took a long time for us to figure that out. Um, you would think he would figure that out already by now. But that's how I've been dealing with um, disagreements or conflicts in my lifetime. I noticed that I tend to just use more of like, um, I play around with your ego. I guess is what you I, I do my best to hurt your ego but I maintain like a calm tone to my voice so I kind of leverage your anger and make it look make you look like you're overreacting whereas I'm calm here and looking at you like are you done being a baby so there, there, there are times that I share something about myself with Sarah when I'm being vulnerable and the next time we get into a fight, she uses the information that I shared with her when I was being vulnerable and used it against me. For example? Um, oh, well, I'm not going to say it. But <laughs> I find that to be a cheap shot or below the belt shot or just psychological warfare. That's what I'm talking about. Right. And I, of course, at the time had no clue that my doing so actually hurt him like 10 times more and it actually offended him way more 
than I anticipated, you know? Like, I literally was just hoping to hurt him back um, emotionally, but I had no idea that I used his vulnerability and turned it against him and actually offended him 10 times more. Of course, when he was able to voice that to me, I totally understood and I apologized profusely, but yeah, I'm only human and it's a work in progress. Like these are habits that are hard to break because I've been using it all my life. I don't think Olaf's plate is full enough. There's still room for more, right? Number two in our rules of engagement is even if you don't intend to hurt your partner's feelings, if feelings got hurt, then the hurt is real. When we're in the mirrors, we both know that we never have intention to hurt one another. Right. There are times that we say things um, out of spite mm -hmm. in, a, in a heat of moment, but not because that you really want to hurt that person, but just because you got so heated, just blurred out the first thing that comes to your mind, and then later realize I probably shouldn't have said that 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 must have hurt my partner's feeling. So we understand that we never are um, planning to uh, hurt the feelings of the other person. Like we never have a hidden agenda. Or like, you know, or an MO or like, okay, or a premeditated plan to sort of attack your spouse or your partner. Right. But every once in a while you say things but then that are hurting your partner's feeling. So then, even if it did not intend it, if the feelings got hurt, since that hurt is real, you have to acknowledge it, validate that feeling of hurt, and apologize that, that you hurt your partner's feelings. This was something that I had to learn from Justin here because um, I would constantly try to justify my reasoning behind uh, the words I use or reasoning behind my actions or, or reasoning behind my response and then he would he would tend to block me off and say it doesn't matter what your intentions are what matters is my feelings were hurt. What matters is the impact is what he tends to do. And so I had to learn to acknowledge that if his feelings were hurt, I need to validate that for him because giving him that validation actually helps him to de-escalate and it also helps him to um, feel better about the fact that he is being heard and that his feelings are being valued and respected by me or by the other person. I mean, who doesn't want to feel that way, right? So even though my intentions were like, well, I didn't mean to say that to hurt you. I didn't mean to offend you. I could justify all I want. At the end of the day, all he needs is validation that I hear him, that I heard him, and that I understood that his feelings of hurt are real. And I apologize that I caused those feelings to happen, even if it's unintentional. Right. So to, to us, we figured that only way to move forward in a disagreement is to validate those hurt feelings. If you don't validate and just try to brush it under a rug, it's gonna pop up the next second. Right. Or acknowledge is another word. If that if you understand it better, it's just acknowledge that he he has feelings, he or she has feelings and that feelings were hurt this regardless of the intention and that you have to apologize for those for causing those feelings to be hurt. Mm -hmm. Number three in our rules of engagement is acknowledge each other's reality. You have to understand that your reality may be different than your partner's reality. Mm. But it doesn't mean their realities are false. It's just the way you perceive things is different 
than how your partner perceives things. For, so true. For example, <laughs> if I if you're in an argument and then I sense there's a tone in the voice of Sarah and I point it out to her, you have a tone in your voice. And then she says I don't have a tone in my voice. Then I say, Yes you do and right right there you also have a tone in your voice. Then I'll say, I would know whether I have a tone in my voice or not, and I'm telling you I don't. Okay, so in that scenario, from from my perspective, I genuinely perceive tone in her voice. So I voiced that out. I did not fabricate this. I did not say this just to hurt her feelings. It was your reality. My reality is I genuinely sense the tone in her voice. From her perspective, she genuinely did not recognize that she had the tone in her voice or I could genuinely my reality is I know I didn't have a tone to my voice so you can think that way yes <laughs> <laughs> if you genuinely did not recognize that you have a tone in your voice mm. by saying that you don't have a tone in your voice mm -hmm. you're not you're not lying to me no. or you're not fabricating something mm. you're not just going on a deny 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 right. path you genuinely don't no, why I am Sensing. saying that there's tone, tone yeah, in your voice. Exactly. Okay, so what, what you would have to do is stop convincing yourself that your partner is lying to you when, uh, when they don't agree with you. So for example, he needs to stop convincing himself that I'm lying to him in that scenario. You're right. Right. Th that you, Where you're I not, said, you're, there is no tone to my voice. Right, and then and from your perspective, but then for me, I have to stop convincing myself that my partner is falsely accusing me of something out of spite or just to point fingers or just to start a fight, you know? So it's, it's a work in progress. It's something, it's a, something you have to learn over the years to try to like swallow your pride and just acknowledge that the other person's reality is different from your reality. And they're totally valid. Completely valid to each of us. Number four in the rules of engagement, acknowledge each other's opinion. Avoid dismissal, like saying things like, you can think whatever you want. By that phrase, it makes it sound like that your opinion isn't being valued. Or like you don't have a say, or you don't get to do that, you don't get to say anything, it's all me. Instead of dismissing each other's opinion, the better things to do better thing to do is saying things like I hear you or I understand how you I understand how that makes you feel so those are better way mm. of, of acknowledging how you are listening to your partner's opinion like I hear you I understand what you're trying to say um, I acknowledge that your feelings are real Okay, number five on our rules of engagement is agree on a magic phrase to cease fire and continue at another time. So there are times when you are starting to have disagreement and it's starting to escalate but we can't really fully resolve it at the time for whatever reason. Uh, in our case, it's usually because our kids are in the same room as us. Right. Or sometimes, say, our family members are in the same household, right, when they're visiting. Or let's say you're in a public place, like you're at a restaurant, and you're, you're starting to disagree on something that is starting to escalate in public. Right. So, so the, you have to agree on a, this magic phrase, and you have to respect it. When that phrase is uttered, you can't keep probing, keep asking questions, keep badgering, you know, follow that person around around the house and demanding to talk about it right here, right now. And you don't keep to you don't get to sort of walk out either. You don't get to like mutter under your breath, like, you know, complain under your breath kind of thing, or use them as a third person, like, oh yeah, when is he when he does this and he wants it his way and like, you know what I mean? I tend to do that. <laughs> But yeah, what's our magic phrase? We might have two here. Okay. One is like in front of the kids. We say, I don't want to escalate in front of the kids. Let's talk about this at later time. Okay. That's yeah. one when we're trying, when we find ourselves in a disagreement in front of the kids. Right. Another magic phrase is 
I'm going to excuse myself and we'll talk about this later. Okay, yeah. So I think the second one is I'm going to excuse myself and let's talk about this later. Um, that's in instances between um, two people where one of them really cannot be in the presence of the other at that moment and in order to avoid um, confrontation and escalation of like emotions and starting to drop you know words that might be unintentional um, sometimes the other person needs that because you know two people are alike you can't expect two people to be comfortable in each other's presence at that moment in the heat of the moment sometimes one of you prefers to like step away but you don't want to disrespect the other person make the other person feel like you're walking out on them so that's when you sort of say like i would like to excuse myself for the moment i will uh, we will talk about this later then that way the other person doesn't feel like you're walking out on them or that you're disrespecting them by leaving the room when they're not done talking or they're not done probing and asking you questions you know right so that you use that when you're about to break your rule of engagement number one you know there's something really simmering inside and you're about to burst in, about to yell or about to use foul language. Or you're about to call each other names, you're about to like throw things, like who knows, you know, like if that's the level of anger that you have, you just feel like tossing things around and maybe even pulling your partner's hair out. <laughs> so before, first of all, it's not funny, do not get physical with your partner like ever, 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 ever. No matter how tempted you are, no matter what your upbringing is, never ever ever lay a finger on your partner. So I don't get to lay a finger on him, he doesn't get to lay a finger on me. It works both ways. It's not just, oh, the man should never slap his wife. It's the woman should never hurt, physically hurt. Well, I guess it doesn't have to be a woman, but as a partner, you never get any justifiable reason to physically hurt the other person, to physically touch the other person out of anger, right? Mm -hmm. Good job! Uh, she's doing it again! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven! Again, 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 again! Again, honey! Good job! Okay, stand up! Stand up. Stand up. Come on, my love. And we're done. <laughs> but she did it. <laughs> She's hiding. You did it. I got it. I got it. I got it. And you someone sticking her nose. You did it, Chanel. Oh, she's doing it again. One. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> Yay! Good job! Good job, honey! We finally got it on video. Rule number six is trying to win the fight, even if it means your partner is hurting on the other end, must not mean does not mean that you're winning at all. So you guys, this it all comes down to pride. We each have our own sense of pride. And when you get into a conflict with your partner, you tend to want to win that fight. Right? I know I do. And I'm sure Justin here is not going to deny it. He wants to win the fight too. Now if you each try to keep winning the fight, um, you end up both, you both end up losing it because when one person wins, the, that means the other person loses. And when the other person loses and their feelings are being hurt, then it doesn't really feel like winning at all, does it? Mm. Because my partner's happiness is my happiness. Exactly. Like truly, if you do love your partner, their happiness is your happiness. So if you win and they're hurting or losing on the other end, you can't possibly feel like you're, you actually won. I know in the beginning it's going to feel that way when you're like, yes, I won that fight. But over time, you're going to start feeling, you know, like, come on. He, does, he or she did not deserve that. And he or she deserves 
to be happy as well. Because when you see them sort of in a corner, sad and feeling defeated, how could you possibly feel like you want that? Because you don't hate your partner, you love them. Right, love? Mm -hmm. You love them. Even though they sometimes make you want to kill them, you love them. Okay, because losing the fight is sometimes better than losing your partner altogether. OMG, I just rhyme. I can start a rhyme what? song. Which part rhyme? <laughs> I'm really slow at this. Losing the fight is sometimes better so that you don't lose your partner. I don't remember what I said, but I rhymed, okay? Are you sure? Yeah. Because I didn't hear the rhyme. I heard it. Okay. Bonus point. Try to show a verbal appreciation for each other for the little things they do. Right. And that goes long ways. It goes both ways and it does go a long way. I guess that's one, like the, the bottom line that we have realized or the common denominator in almost every single one of our conflicts, we realize that it's because the other person feels, does not feel appreciated by your partner. Like the other person doesn't feel appreciated by you. Even though deep down you appreciate the little things they do or even the big things they do, um, like I have a tendency to not sort of point out um, or express my gratitude. So I, I have a tendency to not say, not notice out loud, for example. Like I, he put up our wedding photo um, the other day and then I noticed it. I said, oh, that looks nice. But I said that to myself and I didn't even realize that I didn't get to say it out loud. So now he felt that I didn't even notice it was there or that I didn't notice that he put it up. It was a heavy piece of... You know, he's going to show you later. <laughs> it was a really heavy a piece of picture. Uh, and he was able to put it up after years and years of us, like, not figuring out, not, not knowing where to put it in the house. Like, he put it up, and I appreciated it. I was like, oh, that looks nice. But I said it to myself. And he needed to hear it. And just, like, vice versa, you know. Like, I would do little things. I don't even know what I do. <laughs> Tell me what I do. <laughs> Oh, you prepare dinner for us, and I come down after working, and I don't... Then you just come down and eat. I start, you know, inhaling food without saying... Right. And I don't, honestly, I don't even notice um, that I needed that. I, I needed to hear him appreciate me. But then we notice that it piles up inside, and then one day when we're having a conflict, it comes up. It's like, well, I do so many things in the house and you never appreciate it. And then we're like, well, I do appreciate it. Well, you never say it out loud. And that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Ultimately, it may not be something that feels natural to you, but just try to be more conscious and more intentional about thanking your partner for all the little things they do. Even if it's like, thank you for putting the groceries away or thank you for taking the trash out. Or, Thank you for cooking breakfast today, you know, like just the little things. Thank you for cleaning up after the kids while I was putting them to sleep. The little things, honestly. Just saying it out loud, it may not feel natural because you don't normally thank your partner or your loved ones or people that are dear to you, right? Because you're like, okay, this is weird. Your family, I don't usually thank members of the family or, you know, it doesn't come naturally because the way we were brought up, we don't say thank you in our families, you know, like we were brought up in pretty conservative families and we don't say thank you, we don't say sorry. It's really weird to say I love you in our families. And of course, Justin and I here are trying to change that um, and we consciously are more intentional about saying it to each other and also to our kids. We don't want our kids to grow up in that same environment, although we love our parents very dearly. Um, they really did the best that they could at the time or during their time they didn't have the same resources that we do these days we have the internet we got articles we got books to read right but um yeah so we're trying to teach sabrina and chanel that it's okay that we say i love you that it's normal to grow up in that environment where you say i love you you say thank you and you say sorry and please of course please is very easy everything else is hard <laughs> Okay, so that are six rules of engagement when you're in a fight as a married couple plus a bonus content. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and like and share and comment.
please that would really help our channel and we would really appreciate that support i mean just if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and please give us a thumbs up if you like this video and also thank you thank you thank you to all our love with standers for sticking by us despite us you know not being as active when it comes to posting videos we know we keep promising that we will try but thank you so much for those of you who do understand that um, we try to put our family first and so of course we try to enjoy quality time with our kids and we're not really used to like having the phone up and recording and even if we do we're not usually properly dressed <laughs> I mean like I walk around because I nurse like I'm still breastfeed so I walk around with just like a bra and pajamas and it's just inappropriate sometimes yes <laughs> but at the end of the day we would like to reassure you guys that we do love each other very very much right and what we've learned so far is that marriage takes a lot of work just like it doesn't it's not it doesn't just apply to marriages it also applies to any relationship if you want it to last you have to put the work in and that sometimes means that you would have to give up a lot of things that you're used to to meet the other person in the middle or to compromise a lot of things like for us the number one thing is pride we had to compromise on pride right love mm -hmm. yeah because the bigger picture is what matters the most and the bigger picture is that we want to have a successful and lasting and happy and loving marriage so that our kids would be able to look up to us one day and go like yes that's true love. I was raised in that. And I would love to be able to find that, like strive to find that. Because we ourselves have not experienced being around other people that ex like showed that, that actually had true love, I guess. Or even if they did have love for each other, sometimes their love um, leads them in the path of like having to break apart or grow apart. We, we would like to try our hardest to stay together. Right? Because we've come a long way. So, yeah. You still love me? Of course. Can you believe it's been 10 years? Oh my god, have I aged, Tiny? Have I aged? <laughs> we'll show you guys some pictures of from 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Love you. Love with standards. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Today in Ukraine, many people struggle to survive, and many lives have been tragically cut short. If you are wondering how you can help to show support for the residents of Ukraine, please donate to unhcr.org. That's United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Our hearts go out to the civilians and brave soldiers during this war. Let's not blame entire nation for decisions that their leaders have made. Be kind to your neighbors as we are all part of this human race. Together, let's stand for world peace.